Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Today I'm going to try to do my January wrap up. Um, I'm a little bit intimidated because this month I read 11 books, which is probably an all time high for me. Um, here's my stack of the, the books that I have uh, physical copies of and I'll throw up pictures of the ones that I don't have um, physical copies of. So several of them were short. So 11 books sounds like a lot to me, but um, in terms of page count, it wasn't, um, you know, as much as, as you might think. I think it was, um, I actually wrote it down. It was uh, 2,673 pages. Um, so not insane, although then I also had two audiobooks um, on top of that. So let's dive right in. Um, so I'll real quickly go through the five books that I've already just posted reviews of, but just in case um, you're new to my channel or you don't watch all my videos, which is totally fine, um, but are interested in some of these, I'll just do a quick um, a quick summary of them. So the first book I read in 2021 was a great but sobering way to start off the year um, was Paying the Land by Joe Sacco. So I'll put a picture up um, here and I will link to um, my review of that book as well. So Joe Sacco is a comics journalist, so it's a graphic novel format, although it's all nonfiction. It's a telling of the colonization of the Northwest Territories in Canada, the Indigenous peoples in the Northwest Territories, um, with a big focus on talking about the struggles of continuing their culture um, and also struggles over the natural resources um, in British Columbia, the struggle between um, kind of indigenous movements and um, indigenous ways of thinking about the land versus a capitalist and extractive um, ways of thinking about the land. So that was a five-star book, absolutely unbelievable. Um, and then um, one of the books I finished um, for this month is uh, Pride and Prejudice, um, which uh, fits my um, uh, my challenge for myself for 2021, which is to read Jane Austen's six major novels. And then I'm also reading a book that critiques them called um, Jane Austen, A Secret Radical by Helena Kelly. And so um, in my review of Pride and Prejudice, I actually didn't talk about this book very much because so many people are familiar with it. And I focused more on what I learned from the section of Helena Kelly's book that um, puts this book in its historical and political context, which was absolutely fascinating. Um, so please go check it out if you're interested in that. And I read this book as part of a year-long read-along called Down Memory Jane, which is organized um, via a Discord. Um, so I will link to some of the organizers' channels down below if you want to read along with Jane Austen. It's a cool read-along because um, each of the six of Austen's main novels were reading every other month, and then the months in between those were filling in with a retelling of each book. So in February, we're reading a diverse retelling of Pride and Prejudice, which is called Pride by um, Ibiza Boy. So I'll throw up a picture of the cover here um, and provide a link to that book as well below because I'll be reading it in February. Uh, Pride and Prejudice, oh my gosh, also a five-star book. This is like, this is a perfect book. Um, Okay, and then another book that I already posted a review of is Off to be the Wizard, which is a kind of hilarious sci-fi story. It's very silly. Um, it's a modern day uh, computer coding person who discovers a secret data file deep in the AT&T mainframe. It turns out all of our reality is coded in this file and he realizes he can essentially give himself magical powers using that file. He gets in trouble with the feds um, and his escape plan was to go back to medieval England and pretend to be Merlin. Um, but it turns out he's not the only person that has discovered this file and has had that idea. So most of the book is about the silly things that happen in this kind of society of wizards. Um, and uh, uh, there's, you know, one of them goes rogue and so they have to talk about um, taking him down and, and they do that. There's a big showdown, etc. So um, this is just hilarious and lighthearted and was just a joy to read um, while everything else was going on in the month of January. Um, then I've also done a review of Across the Green Grass Fields by Shauna McGuire. This is the sixth book in her Wayward Children series, and if you're not familiar with um, her series, these are all portal fantasies um, about children in our world who are misfits in various ways, um, find their way into um, and 
kind of a tailored perfect for their character magical world really discover themselves come into their own um, so these are these are coming of age stories and although this is the sixth book in the series this is almost um, almost a standalone novel it doesn't interact with any of the previous characters in the series and and you could start your uh, introduction to Sean and McGuire with this book if you'd like. So again, link to my review below. This is a five-star book for me. This series is probably my favorite series ever. So definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested at all in YA fantasy um, and coming-of-age stories. These are absolutely magical. Um, okay, and then the last one that I've already posted a review of is a nonfiction book. It's called World of Wonders, and I read it um, on my Kindle, so I don't have a physical copy, um, by Amy Nezhuku Maratil, um, who is half Filipina and half Indian. Um, and it's a book of very short essays, just a couple of pages, um, where each essay focuses on a specific plant or animal species, and then the essay is part memoir, and so it's her kind of weaving parts of her life and herself um, as they kind of relate metaphorically or literally to um, the plant or animal that she's talking about. And um, she is a poet, so the, like, the writing is just lyrical and beautiful, um, and the book also contains um, beautiful illustrations as well at the start of each essay of what the, um, the organism is that the essay is focusing on. So I'll post a link to my review to that as well. Okay, now we'll get into stuff that I haven't talked about before. Um, and I'll still try to keep it short because we still have like six books. This is insane. I don't know how people read 11 books in one month. Um, so I'm going to start with nonfiction. I read some great nonfiction this month. Um, so one that I did read in hard copy, but I had to take back to the library is Ocean Vuong's um, full-length poetry collection, Night Sky with Exit Wounds. Um, and that was excellent. Um, the poems really focus a lot on family, so a lot of them have to do with um, his relationship with his mother or his father, um, and a lot of them have to do with um, kind of sexuality, coming of age, um, and a lot also draw on his um, history from when he was a child in uh, in Vietnam and also from kind of the, the generational family history of being in, in Vietnam. Um, during the Vietnam War and post-Vietnam um, War. So his poems are just incredibly impactful, um, absolutely beautiful, and they are incredibly literary. Um, I, I tend to prefer poems that are a little more accessible to me, if that makes sense. Um, so his poems are definitely the kind where you want to really slow down, read them multiple times, um, and really try to think through what he's um, what he's communicating. Um, so they're you know they're intellectual. Um, it's an intellectual read. Um, so I really enjoyed it, um, and uh, I, I had to give that five stars. It was just um, you know just really hits you in your soul <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and probably it's it's the sort of poetry collection that I'll want to go back and um, reread because I think uh, every time you approach it, you'll probably get even more out of it. Um, so I definitely recommend that and if you're curious and want to know more I actually heard about that poetry collection from Chase over at um, Chase's Book Thoughts and um, and he gave a really in-depth review of that poetry collection and I think knows more about poetry than I do so um, I will link that um, below as well if you're curious and want to know more. Um, and then my other nonfiction book is um, All Boys Aren't Blue um, by George M. Johnson, who I believe now uses they, them pronouns according to their Twitter profile. So those are the pronouns that I'm going to use, although in this book, a lot of this book is about kind of balancing femininity, femininity and masculinity um, and growing up as a young black boy that was trying to figure out, um, that had natural inclinations towards things that were more feminine, but also um, wanted to and needed to be perceived um, in a more masculine light as well for um, for survival. So so this is uh, their memoir of um, of coming of age. Basically, the this book ends when um, when they graduate college, um, and they call it a memoir manifesto because it's partly going through their memories and going through their stages of growing up, but then part of it is also very prescriptive. So each chapter ends with like a very strong positive message to other. Um, 
kids, teenagers, etc. as the book gets older, um, who might be going through similar things, not necessarily the exact sexuality and gender journey, but just like similar things where you're questioning whether you fit into um, the dominant normative um, sexuality and gender stereotypes. Um, and that manifesto part is really beautiful. You know, they essentially set out to write a text. Um, I think that they probably wish they could have had um, of reading this life story and also just being told like it's okay <laughs> to have these feelings and to have these experiences. Um, like you will be fine and you know, you're beautiful. Um, so I really love this. I found it to be very powerful. Um, it is written at more of a YA level. So if you go into it expecting like an adult type memoir, um, you know, the language is very accessible to, um, to younger folks. Um, so keeping that in mind, you know, it's, yeah, it's incredibly impactful and powerful. I thought this was a, a five star, um, a five star read. So really, really enjoyed this. Um, okay, that's it for nonfiction. So um, going back to science fiction for a second. So I read um, the sequel to Off to be the Wizard that I just briefly talked about before and I've done a review of. So here's the first book. Off to be the Wizard. This is the second book in the series, Spell or High Water by Scott Meyer. The series is called Magic 2.0, I want to say. Um, and so this is uh, the main character, Martin, who we followed in Off to be the Wizard. This is his continuing adventures back in time, <laughs> um, dealing with his like magic powers, because all of reality is a computer file. Um, and uh, there are still funny shenanigans, not quite as overtly silly as Off to be the Wizard is, um, but it's still it's still definitely funny. It's still definitely lighthearted. Um, it's a pretty simple story. Um, the characters are great, and I especially like um, the female characters, which I was a little I had some trepidation about that going into this. Not at, and here I'm stereotyping, but you know it's a story written by a man about a male character who's a computer coder like you see where my brain is going it's probably not very fair um and yeah and there there are there are more female characters um in in this book and they're really interesting and well done and the story is fun so um again if you want just like lighthearted silliness thinking about what space and time really mean and are we in a computer file or is there a higher power you know and this book doesn't even say like it's not even the whole premise is like there's a computer file because if there's a computer file somebody created it and so that's you know they're like we don't know is it a computer file nested within a file or <laughs> is there somebody tapping the keys somewhere um so anyway yeah it's just it's just silly and lighthearted and um these are fun. So these are both solid four star books for me and I'm going to continue um, with that series. Um, okay, then the other one that I have a hard copy of is the second volume of The Lumber Chains. So this is episodes five through eight, excuse me, I think as they appeared online. Um, so I've previously talked about the first volume, uh, one through four, which is Lumberjanes Beware the Kitten Holy. This is Lumberjanes Friendship to the Max. Um, I originally heard about these over on Rosie Cockshit's um, channel, and I just love the premise of these. It's like the Girl Scouts in the U.S. I think it's Girl Guides in Canada. I'm not sure what it would be in U.S. or in, in Europe, but, um, but it's, you know, the Girl Scouts meet mythical creatures and monsters, um, and so it's just... Um, kind of that fairly, somewhat fairly typical YA uh, coming of age friendship story um, going on. Um, there's some queer romance in this. Um, so it's just very enjoyable. There were also some big plot holes, which drove me crazy as an adult reader. So I ended up only giving this three stars, but um, but it was definitely really enjoyable. And my three-year-old, um, if you've watched my previous video where I mentioned the first volume, my three-year-old is equally obsessed with this volume. So winning. Oh, and I should say these are, um, these are comics. Um, and then I listened on audio, continuing with the fantasy route, um, to The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, um, which came out in last fall, fall of 2020. And so that book is part of my Goodreads fantasy challenge, um, where I set myself to read the, um, I think it was the 10 finalists in the Goodreads fantasy awards. I should actually remind myself what my challenge is, but Addie, Addie LaRue was on it. Um, and uh, so in that book, um, for those who aren't familiar, uh, there's a 20, I think 23 year old uh, woman, Addie LaRue in 
France in like 1714 who um, is being kind of pushed into a marriage that she doesn't want. He's not a bad guy, but she just wants to see the world and be free and not belong to somebody else. Um, and uh, she's been kind of worshipping the old gods, the nature gods, I think for a long time. Um, and her kind of mentor, who's a, you know, an elder in the village has said, worship the gods during the day, but never, ever, ever pray to the gods at night. Um, and so, uh, at, at one point, um, I don't want to give too much away, but this is all like in the first couple of chapters, so it doesn't feel very spoilery, but anyway, but, um, at one point she, she accidentally, um, She's totally distraught, doesn't really realize how time is passing, and accidentally prays after twilight, after dark. Um, and so a god of the dark answers. And um, she makes a deal with him. Um, you know, she just says she wants more time. And um, he gives her more time than she really wanted <laughs> and restricts her in other ways. And I, I think this is in, like, the book jacket and stuff. Um, so she's she's basically immortal. She's going to be able to live um, kind of until she's tired of living. Um, but the part of the kind of, like, restrictions and price, I mean, this god wants souls. Like, he doesn't actually want her to live forever. He wants her soul. And so he makes it really hard for her. So she can't be remembered. Um, so as soon as she leaves a room, the people who were interacting with her forget who she is. Uh, she can't write, she can't draw, she can't leave any marks, she can't even damage things. If she accidentally damages something, spills something, sets it on fire, um, it stops and just like goes back to the way it was. So, um, she literally can't leave a mark. And, um, that's really hard. <laughs> you know, she can't own things. Um, uh everybody forgets her, right? So, like, it's a really hard way to live, which is, you know, part of the deal is this guy wants her soul, like I said. So, um, so anyway, the book flips between, um, earlier periods in her life and then a lot of the actual kind of action that drives the story is set in 2014. Um, so she's lived for a very long time and I don't really want to talk about what happens in 2014 because I feel like then we're getting a little spoilery, so I won't mention it. But the premise is really, really cool. Um, and the book, I think, is executed really well. Um, the main thing that just got to me, and, and listening to it on audio, this is the sort of thing that normally doesn't bother me in audiobooks, um, is the writing was actually fairly repetitive. Um, and uh, yeah, normally audiobooks, I end up being kind of like swept up by the narrator. And with this one, I just kind of couldn't let go of some of the repetitiveness in the writing. I think the book could have been a lot shorter, probably, and had um, a similar impact. Um, but the main character is is really well done. And I really liked the way the plot went. Um, so yeah, if you like the premise, I would definitely suggest checking that book out. I did give it four stars because it was very enjoyable. Um, and the premise is really cool. Um, okay, so then just two more books to talk about. Um, so I read a romance book um, this month. Well, and I read Jane Austen, which is wrong. Oh, and I have three more books to talk about. Oh my gosh. So I actually, I said originally I read 11 books. I actually am going to count 12 books because I'm reading Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. And I'm, um, this is the cover of the book. So I'm so close to being done. So I'm definitely going to finish this in the next two days. I'm filming this on January 29th. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and count it. So actually I'll just talk about this one real quick. Um, so I ended up reading two Jane Austen books this month because Megan over at Megan's Reading Revelations, I will link to her channel, um, announced this as a buddy read on her channel and her Discord server. So I wanted to read it with other people. Um, so I ended up reading this. So I will talk about this in more detail though in a future video because I want to more, f I want to focus less on this book because it's so famous and talk about the critique of it and the historical political context that I'm going to learn. Um, when I read the portion in my, um, Jane Austen, uh, criticism book that I mentioned and didn't think to grab. So I'll put up a picture of the cover here. So I'm counting this. Um, okay. But anyway, so that's kind of, that's a romance. Pride and Prejudice was a romance. I also read a contemporary romance. Um, so this is A Cowboy to Remember by Rebecca w uh, Weatherspoon, which is the first in her Cowboys of California series, which is a new series. Um, and I heard about this um, from Kazen over on um, the channel Always Doing, so I'll link to that below. 
Um, and the cover's a little ridiculous. I mean, contemporary romance covers are a little ridiculous, right? Um, this book is not as steamy as the cover would lead you to believe. It's it's mostly just very sweet. Um, so this is an, an amnesia trope book, and I believe it is deliberately a retelling of um, Sleeping Beauty. Um, so the main heroine very quickly in the book, uh, we get to see her a little bit as her pre-amnesia self, but then she has an accident and gets amnesia. Um, and she's, uh, she's a very successful chef, um, who's on a, a, talk, a cooking talk show. She has in the past been a reality TV star on a cooking show. So she kind of hasn't made her careers like up and coming. And then this happens. Um, and her friends don't know who to call, like her friends and her agent, because her parents are dead, her grandmother who partially raised her is dead, um, but they do find um, some really close friends, um, including the gentleman on the cover, who own a ranch in California, and this is the ranch where her grandmother, I think, was like a riding instructor and a horse trainer, and so she spent most of her childhood on the ranch, and was actually like best friends with this guy, Zach, and his brothers, and of course, she doesn't remember but they you know love her and so they're like oh my gosh yes to the rescue so they come to New York and get her and take her back to the ranch to kind of hide from the paparazzi and hope that she recovers her memory um, and it turns out that in the past there had been some romantic drama between her and Mr. Zach um, and so Zach is kind of like new slate we can start again and forget not forget, but like we can move through all these misunderstandings and things that happened when we were 20. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a very sweet romance. I won't give away any more of like what happens, um, but it's, yeah, it's well done. It's very sweet. Um, it's diverse romance and Rebecca Weatherspoon is a, is a black woman. So it's, um, you know, this is a big uh, movement in the romance um, genre is, is to have more diverse um, characters. Um, written by more diverse people, and it absolutely delivered on that. This was this was great. Um, so this was a four star read um, for me. I really enjoyed it, and I would like to continue with the series because I know the next book uh, is the story of um, Zach's younger brother Sam. So we get his romance story. So that was fun. Okay, finally, last book was another audiobook. Um, it's in the mystery um, category, and it was the weed that swing that. The Weed That Strings the Hangman's Bag, excuse me. Um, and I'm totally blanking on the author's name, Alan Bradley, I think. So I'll put up a cover um, of the book. Um, and this is the really popular series where the um, the heroine, the person who solves the mystery, is named Flavia Deleuze, and she's like 11 years old. And she's just this total precocious, uh, she's a little bit of a brat, um, but she's also very endearing. Um, she's a total chemistry nerd and is just very analytical and logical and very nosy. Um, and, uh, lives in a household. This is set in like 1950 England. Um, she lives in a household where their mother died while she was just a baby. Um, she doesn't remember her mother, um, but her two older sisters do. And so there's a bit of a kind of resentment family dynamic there. Um, and then their father is like still grieving, even though his wife has been dead for, you know, almost a decade at this point. Um, editing by Van here. Um, I seem to have had some issue with my computer and the camera cut out. Um, so, um, just gonna slip in here. Yeah, so um, Flavia Deleuze gets to run all around town. She's nosy. She happens to be there when people die with some regularity, um, at least so far in the series, and um, is kind of a pain in the butt for the um, police officers that are trying to figure out uh, who died in any given book. Um, and since she knows everybody and has been in everybody's business, she sees a lot that the police officers miss and so is able to give them kind of context and clues that they might have missed and um, really solves the mystery. She's the key player there. So um, those books are really cute. They're, they're not the sort of thing that I want to listen to back to back. Having the 11 year old protagonist is just not, even, even though it's written for adults, it's not like a kid's book. Um, it still is just not quite what I want to be reading all the time. So I've only listened to two of them so far over the period of a couple of years. I will be continuing in the series. Um, it's a solid four star book for me, very enjoyable, but I'm not going to jump right into the next one in the series. So just to throw that out there. 
Um, and with that, that it, those are my 12 books uh, for January, which is kind of an insane reading month for me, although I hope I can keep up a pretty similar pace. I mean, I, I think um, I felt really happy with it. I wasn't stressing about reading. Um, I don't think I've ever stressed about reading, but um, I was just more consistently picking up a book in my downtime than doing other things, which is what I want to be doing and why I started my booktube channel. Um, so yeah, that was a great month for me. So if you liked my wrap up and want to see more content, um, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I would love to see you in my future comment sections um, if you're new to my channel. Um, and uh, with that, I will sign off. So thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.